This is, a, this is a real art over here. I mean, Kalia definitely has her uh, her rolling game pretty tight, but you got a paper towel element. Yeah, I usually wet get it. Get the bro. moisture. Yeah, you got to get it wet and clean it off, man. These things are dirty. You got like that extra layer of gunk. Guys, you got to clean your leaves. <laughs> you That's a to. really important lesson here. Clean, clean, back clean your leaves. Clean your leaves. You know? I think that that's important. They don't know, uh, not everybody slide, observes slide that. Over yeah. uh, not everyone knows to observe uh, such important protocols, oh. guys. But if anyone out there out was here. wondering, it's important to clean your leaves. Clean your leaves and wash your ass. Clean your leaves and wash your ass. That's a, those are words to live by. Hashtag. Mm -hmm. Hashtag clean your leaves and wash your ass. Yep. Hashtag, you could even get that tattooed. Mary Jane, good afternoon, and welcome once again to About That Time. I am your host, Noah Rubin, joined as always by Kalia McNeil. We have a very, very, very special guest in the building, the one and only Mr. FKI First. If you are not up on the FKI First movement, you can call him first. He's been dropping heat left and right. He's collaborated with the likes of Post Malone, Two Chains, Travis Scott, everyone in the game that you need to know about. He also has his own series of albums called Good Gas, which is something we can't argue with. We always like that Good Gas. God. Volume three just dropped, guys. Check it out on your Spotify's. Mr. First, thank you so much for coming through, my friend. Thank you, man. It's a pleasure to sure. chill, a pleasure to chill. First is putting us in the game. He's, we're cleaning our leaves, guys. We have never been put in the clean leaf game, but right. now we're in the clean leaf game, and it feels yeah, good. It feels I feel good like right now. Smoking will not be the same after today. Smoking will not be the same. We want to check in, Mary Jane, everyone from Snoop's Facebook, Westfest TV, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a lit ass Thursday, and we're just gonna do this thing right. First, thank you so much for joining us, man. Man, thank you. I'm loving. I'm digging. Here we are. Here we are. We, let's roll up. Let's put some on. smoke in the air. I think that uh, you know, I'll, I'll pregame here with a little vape okay. action. You know, Loon, uh, our fine sponsors, bringing us this this great program. Have a little vape moment. Where's the PG? Chill. The pre ground. Okay, guys. I have a special pocket attached to my uh, oh, my dude. my shirt. I can keep the pre ground cannabis in in the in the pocket here guys sometimes i just got a surprise you know he's like you zip it up it's a high security kind of situation mm -hmm. and you can you can open it up and then you can surprise people you got the pre-ground you're living good pre -ground. um now first tell us a little bit more about All the good right. gas movement uh how did you get into producing initially um i don't even call it producing i just call it just creating and just making music it's just it's all one thing to me but um like, good gas is just, well, like, this is something I always say, like, what's better than good gas? And you need gas to, to go. You need gas to get moving. Whether it's weed or whether it's the fucking gas you put in your car, you got to have the good gas. Absolutely. To get going. Absolutely. Right with tech run, baby. Yeah. And All my, right. And, you know, in my version, and my good gas is music, you know? So 100. Me and my friends have always been, it's just always been like a running thing, like, oh yeah, that's that that that, that gas, that's that gas. Volume one, two, and three it was a joke when we were young. Right. We just always used to make something it like good gas. It was called good gas the label. We would act like we was like in cash money. We used to be like, yeah, good gas the label. <laughs> that that gas volume three just playing around and shit. And then one day I'm like, I need to make this shit a real thing, bro. This should be a real thing because like we're saying it every day, mm -hmm. and like in bet between me and my friends, like it's an everyday thing. So I'm like. Let's, let's do this shit for real, let's bro. Let's do this shit for and, real. Um, and keep spreading the good gas around the world. 100%. Good gas movement. Mm -hmm. It's a good gas movement. Now, speaking of putting it out, uh, you're working with Mad Decent on these releases. You have an interesting relationship with Diplo. You want to tell us a little bit about uh, how that relationship came about? Oh, yeah. See, I'm like Black Diplo. Black Diplo yeah. in the building. Yeah, Black Diplo All right, that's a, that's a new movement. I like that. Yeah, um, I think the world needs Black Diplo for sure. Yeah, so man. Definitely ready for you to fill that void. But nah, I met Diplo like some years back in Atlanta. He had a... When I first... I, I produced a song called Make It Rain with Travis Porter, that strip oh, club shit. Make it rain. So he was... And he fucked with it. He was a fan of it. So he he hit me up. And I was I was rapping too. He, he helped me out with my first project. It was like... It was called Transformers in the Hood. That name is weird to me now. But it was called Transformers in the Hood, though. And he, he helped me, like, he helped me make it. He told us to pull up to this club. He was DJing in a fucking bomb shelter. This place called MJQ. It's like not even, you can't even fit a lot of people in there. And I'm like, damn, Diplo pull up, pulled up and DJed in here. And he killed it, too. So I'm like, damn, that's, a cool, that's some cool shit. That's a humble dude, you know what I mean? Right. And 
after that he t- he told me to pull up to the studio. You know, we just and we became cool back then. So we've been cool ever since. Now, yeah. Good Gas Volume Three just dropped. You know, you've had some really legends, honestly, on the through the course of the uh, the series. Tell us a little bit about Good Gas Volume Three and what sort of makes it specifically uh, different than the others. Good Gas Volume Three. Um, Good Gas Volume Three has a lot of the up and coming artists and like new artists because I love fucking with new artists. It's always like a blank canvas, like you could just do whatever, just create. It's not like stipulations or just certain things you have to follow. You can just do whatever you want. You know what I mean? So, um, so Volume Three definitely has like a lot of new artists, and they're up and coming. And they're amazing. Um, from Famous Deck, Sensei Molly, uh, Matt Ox. To um, wait, 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 wait. Oh, Big Child Support. Y'all, there's a, there's a, there's a kid named Big Child Support. He fine. <laughs> so, are you? How are you connecting with a lot of artists uh, like this? Are you kind of just it through your social circle? Is people hitting you up with tracks? Like, how are you connecting with uh, artists that inspire you to do things like Good Gas Volume Three? Um, things that inspire me to to do Good Gas is really just. I just want to. I just all. I just want to create like a like an avenue. Because you know how, like, music, if you get on your, like, social, the, the, you're sharing, your music sharing things like Spotify, iTunes, and all that, you're, like, it forces you to listen to certain things, and, like, you know, like, they have different curators, and I just wanted to be a curator. I feel like I was already naturally doing it anyway. Yeah. So, hey, come listen to this. This is, like... This is the gas you need to hear. These are up and coming, and it's it's not a paid for thing. Yeah, a paid for playlist and none of that. It's yeah. just all original music. Just doing your thing. And just mm-hmm. trying to do. I just like collaborate. Just creating collaborations between people that never worked before. Now, is shit. the Good Gas series gonna continue beyond Volume Three? Oh you yeah, see Good it? Gas Fifty, bro. Good gra- Good Gas Fifty. Oh yeah, we wow. going. We gonna have Good Gas block yeah. parties, and all that, man. I yeah. like that. I like. Is there is the Good Gas weed line about to drop? I I heard a little rumor that you might be getting into the weed game. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We jumping. We making that leap because you know I, I fuck with the Bay. The Bay has the gas. Mm-hmm. Those are the, those are the Bay is like. That's all. Shit, it is Silicon Valley, and it's Silicon Valley for weed too. They yeah. know what the fuck it's they the, doing it's the with mecca. it. It's the it's mecca. It's the mecca, bro. Yeah. I've been to Denver does not have the gas. Like Sorry this, Denver. Like I fuck with Denver though, but I'm just saying like it's legal there, but eh, eh. And the fuck, tradition, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. heart the heart and soul of cannabis. But other than Cali, right I fuck with um I fuck with um Portland. Yeah, yeah. Portland. I, I they fuck, got that dank weather up there, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that I, moisture I, in the air. I, I feel like it makes the dank extra dank. So tell us a little bit more though about your adventures in the uh, in the weed game. Do you have a line that you're dropping? Do you have uh, some products coming out? Tell us a little more about that. Yeah. Um, damn, I wonder if this is telling if this what I'm about to say telling too much. But it's a nice. I have a nice strand, a nice little cross between. Um, kind of tastes like cookies. Kind of tastes like gelato, and then kind of has that little fruity flavor. That, Bubble gum slash Sounds Skittles like dessert. type. Dessert's yeah, it's ready, like a, man. it's like a dessert. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like a dessert. But um, but yeah, that's the trochee. That's the that's the trochee. That's what it's called. The, the strain is called. What trochee. is what does the name trochee mean? The trochee is the name of the bear, the good gas bear. Trochee is the good gas bear. Yeah. What is the origin of trochee's name? Trochee. Oh, um. Well, I'm I'm African, and my first name is uh. My first name is um Tro- what well, you said like Troco like he was African like Troco Troco no not Troco it's like Trocon, Trocon. it's spelled Trocon though Trocon. and my sisters used to call me Troki when I was little cool okay. so it was so like it's sort of like a play on yeah. what your sisters used to call you Troki yeah. the Bear yeah. that's dope now you're in so uh, you're dropping a strain. Uh, are you gonna have vaporizers? Are you gonna have accessories? Are you gonna do? Other oh yeah things everything I'm doing strain? yeah I'm doing a couple I'm doing the collaborations um with Trippy Sticks. For uh, all the vaping yeah. in situations, mm-hmm. but um, but yeah, full full line of good gas strands are on the way. Guys, check out I'm check out the good gas. Uh, we actually have a comment from the audience. We check in with our homies out there. Um, Snoop, I need a job. Uh, okay, oh. holler at Snoop. I don't know whether we can uh, <laughs> plug it in. Uh, hello from Nigeria. We love our homies from West Africa. Side. Checking. Hey, I'm Liberian, man. West Side. Liberians, Nigerians. Mm-hmm. We love you guys. Thank West you so much for being with us. Um, yeah. Mary Jane, Westfest TV, 
Uh, everyone out there following this new social platforms, thank you guys for checking in. This is about that time. We're chilling with FKI first. Uh, the program today is brought to us by our fine friends at Loon. Uh, they make dope vaporizers. They make great pre-rolls. Uh, we chill with them. We enjoy. Mm-hmm. So you guys, pre-rolls are little... pretty bomb, too. Pre-roll, I'm not, pre-rolls I'm not are a, bomb, I'm not a guys. Fan, and they've, they've got, we have beautiful ashtrays. Check out, guys, this is like the greatest <laughs> ashtray of all time. It's like a handmade little gold embossed ashtray that Loon cooked up. So classy. So these, these guys are doing classy. That's classy. classy. Like if you're going to ash on something guys, like that. Classy stuff. That's the a first classy season, he knows. ashtray he knows what right classy there. Stuff yeah. is about. And now, I like the fact that it's long. Now, you know? before we dig too deeper, I was doing some research before this interview first. Uh, me and Kalia have been talking about crazy jobs that we've had over the years. Kalia, re- la- on the last episode, talked to us about when she used to have a job working in infomercials. Uh, and that was a really crazy story. I read a story that you used to work at Sam's Club. Is that true? Yeah, man. Just, man, fuck Sam's Club, bro. <laughs> Costco only. Yeah, man. No, they had, the, they had those good-ass, big-ass uh, cheese pizza slices, though. Cheese pizza yeah, slices. That's, like, that's the main redeeming quality. Yeah, of, that's the um, that's Sam's the, Club. that's that's what I fucked with at Sam's Club. All right. But there was this one lady named Myrtle. Ugh, she was so mean. <laughs> that her mean name Myrtle. She, you could tell, yeah, it like, was like put. You can't be nice, and your name is every Myrtle is mean. Yeah, oh, every Myrtle, Myrtle, bro. And they're also Myrtle. like fifty when they're born. She probably still there holding it down too, boy. <laughs> Holding it down, screaming at people, running shit. Totally. But I used to be at the yeah, bro. I used to be at Sam's Club. I used to be at the um. I was a cashier or whatever, and I just used to be like talking to like the cashier right in front of me, like, "Bro, this some bullshit, bro. <laughs> 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 bro, we gotta figure something out, bro. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling. I'm gonna be like the biggest artist and producer ever, bro. We gotta get the fuck out of here, bro. Murder was mean as fuck, bro. <laughs> like, bro, bro, I'm too player for this, bro. Like, no, we can't. <laughs> can't be doing this. So Sam's Club, yeah, that was wild. What was the worst day to work at Sam's Club? Was it was the weekends just like crazy like this? Everyone's oh, there in yeah, this lines. Oh yeah, bro. Cause you know they do that wholesale shit. So it's like people pull up with uh, like fucking flatbeds full of yeah. shit. And all their kids, cause they like bring the kids. To all their kids, the bro. Dog, it, it was crazy. Get the samples. And uh, fucking during like during Christmas, that's when I was like, oh yeah, bro. This ain't this this, this ain't for me, bro. <laughs> they Christmas did, at Sam's Club. Christmas at Sam's That'll Club, break you, bro. man. That'll yeah, break you. It, it really it really will. But I I just used to um. I'm like, yo, let me just return all the groceries back. So I just used to walk around the whole store and just return, like, return all the shit. But I had on the candy aisle, they had, like, them big-ass bag of gummy bears. So I, like, bust it open. And every time I walk by, just, <laughs> just get it, you know, get some good gummy bears on the way. So, that, you know, the gummy bears kept me going. So the, the gummy bears and the gummy bears. I'm actually addicted to gummy bears. It was crazy. I'm try- I am I stopped for a minute, but I'm dead ass addicted to gummy bears, bro. Do you, gummy bears do you have addictive. a specific brand? Or are you just like, if it's a gummy bear, Man, I'm chewing on I'm it? I'm chewing on that shit. Yeah. They say they got organic ones now. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> a gummy bear is a gummy bear. Like, it does seem like a gummy bear is a gummy bear. You can, you can don't. kid yourself, but ultimately, yeah. a gummy bear is a gummy bear. I'm addicted, though, bro. 100% gummy. Now... Are you gonna drop a, a gummy bear, a, an edible gummy bear with a little cannabis in it for us? What do you think about that? Nah, you got in the it. shape of the, your little bear. Oh, that's oh, fine. Oh, I want twenty. Oh, no, I want twenty. I'll, I'll take twenty percent. I'll take twenty percent. Snap, bro, snap. Yeah. snap. You, you snap right I, there, I'll bro. I'll take a small percentage. But, wow. Yeah. That's right. That's right. All right. Uh, we do a segment on about that time uh, first. Uh, we call it "Post It Up." We take some. Uh, uh, you tell us the story behind the picture. We got a little video actually here uh, for our first uh, asset to discuss here uh, on about that time. You're chilling in the hammock, um, hanging out. What's going on out here? You got oh, a, bro, I'm a, just on some player shit. See, see that blade? It, it, it's a knife, but that blade, you know, it cuts cigars. I was smoking a cigar, bro. You know, so that's some player shit. If you really, that's some player shit. If you really, if you really, well, the bust sword. Down you gotta have like, situation. you gotta have your champagne sword. You know, you can crack yeah, the bro. champagne with a sword. You can cut your cigar with a sword. Real deal, Cuban cigar. Chop that shit and smoke. I it. mean, that's even if you had a really lit cake, you probably could get in there with yeah. your sword. You know, yeah. guys, make sure if you want to be a player, you gotta have a sword for cutting cake, cutting cigars, yeah. and maybe. It was crazy when I, when, when I first posted them, like, I don't have a cigar on me, so people gonna think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Just some guy chilling with yeah, a giant sword. Yeah, but I was comfortable, though. 
hey, a hammock is a good place to chill. Yeah, yeah man. And if you have a sword, that makes you extra secure. You know what I mean? No one can come mess with you while you're having your private hammock moment. It's good living right there. Player shit. All right. Speaking of player shit, the next image on Post It Up looks like some real player shit. Uh, where is this picture taken? Oh, that's Tokyo. Oh. Tell us about get, turning up in Tokyo. That's what I remember. That's what I Arigato. Arigato. <laughs> no, nah, but um, it was good gas Tokyo, bro. Good I'm gas like, Tokyo. What's about the What's up with the good gas Tokyo movement? Good, this is some world worldwide shit, bro. I told you the world needs the gas, bro. The world needs the gas, man. But um, yeah, I was in Tokyo working, uh, just shooting music videos and just I had to I had to get away for a minute because I was kind of going through some shit like relationship shit. So I just had to go get away. And I felt like that was a place to get away to and create because I had just had to, I had to get out. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, I just in this, and I felt like Japan is a place I can expand, expand things because everything's amazing out there from the, from the, from from the clothes they wear, everything. I just I I, I love it. I respect it. So you know, I just want to bridge bridge both worlds. Yeah, together. they got swag out there from for Atlanta sure. to Tokyo. They got they, all the they swag. got their own own perspective on things. It's it's very refreshing. Um, mm -hmm. Now, do you fuck with Japanese food? We went to TGI Fridays when we was there. TGI Fridays is lit. Actually, yo, I have a memory. I went to Red Lobster in Tokyo. So the TGI Fridays and the Red Lobster but in Tokyo are both getting props right now. Ichiban. Ichiban, a noodle place, bro. Every day I, was, I, ate, we, I ate noodles the whole time I was there. Deep noodles. Ichi, Ichiban, that is the shit. It and can save you from hangovers. <laughs> it can just revive you if you're tired of something. When the, when the sauce would be hot as hell, your nose be running, but it's straight, though. It's no. good. Ichiban means number one, so mm -hmm. those are some number one noodles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like good living. Now, it sounds, though, like you might be avoiding the topic of sushi. Do you mess with the sushi, Mr. First? Man, I'll I be having my days, bro, and I'm, I'm right. I like, <laughs> I like... I like the fried sushi, bro. I know that. Fried sushi. <laughs> Actually, you know what? The soft, chef, soft fried sh soft shell crab roll. Yeah. Fly, fried soft shell crab roll. I fuck with that. That's spider roll. Undeniable. They the spider roll. Yeah, very the good. spider roll. I think the hood need to deep. fuck need to put a spin on sushi. Hood sushi. Okay, what would you what do you think would be on the menu of the hood sushi menu? Bro, it'll just be like, oh, I know it in oh, at the at the counter they'll have like hot sauce and shit. Some way to <laughs> remix it over because it'll be like breaded. Be like breaded sushi, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel almost that. like almost like fried fish or fried chicken, but we gotta just crisped up, and change, cri change yeah, the fish, yeah, yeah, change the quality yeah, of the fish, change it. Roll. And uh, y'all ever had jello rice? That's some African I shit. I have actually. You know some jello rice? You know what I mean? Put the sushi, wrap it in jello rice. That should be crazy. Sounds amazing to me. I'm ready to it's sign up. It's happening right now. Mm -hmm. um, that gives me a uh, happy feeling. This also looks like a picture of you having a happy feeling, uh, hugging a close friend. Mm -hmm. That's a close friend. Tell mm -hmm. us about this picture. Look, bro. I love, I love her. Look at her. She's so cute. Look at her. Aww. She just like she tells me everything I need to need, uh, everything I need to hear. I tell her everything I need. See, I'm, it makes me smile just looking at it. <laughs> That's real love right there. Absolutely. What's her name? We just take care of you, huh? What's her name? Oh, Maria. Maria. Yeah, Maria. Not to be confused with Myrtle. Yeah. No. Too nasty. Yeah. Myrtle's nasty. Maria is nice. But it just takes you to that place, you know. It just takes. Like, wow. Hugging up. Why would people? Why do why do people not smoke? Why do people not smoke? <laughs> Guys, anyone in the comments, if you don't smoke, let us know why you don't. We want to know. Um, Maria, our friend. Speaking of, oh yeah, I know why people don't smoke though. Speaking mm. of that, in, okay. uh, around the world and just everywhere, because they smoking bullshit. Facts. Guys. So they don't under. So they like. They don't know how good it. Can they be. don't know how good it can be. We died. It gives me a headache. What? Yeah, oh. it's just that's literally like, that's literally like them saying like. That's like a a five year old made you a full a full course meal like a dinner. It's right. gonna be fucking nasty. It's not gonna taste good. That's <laughs> I, I don't know if that was a good it was a good comparison, but <laughs> but it's like you just smoked some random shit, so you don't know you don't even know what gas is. So you you you're just prejudging it. That's no fair. It's true. It's true. It's no fair, bro. No fair. It's like judging Japanese food with ha having been to Japan to eat it. Right. Boom. Right. Right. You know, right. guys, come to America. Enjoy the greatest weed in the world, California yeah. specifically. Um, we've got another video uh, for you. Uh, this one is also pretty fresh. It actually might be a little Cali scenery here. I'm not sure, but you're going to tell me. Um, 
got some desert video shoots going on here. Uh, hey. What what's going on? Man, we dabbing, but we dabbing in the desert. Then what happened to dabbing, bro? R.I.P. to dabbing. But yeah. We was dabbing in the desert. That's me and Post, man. We were shooting a White Iverson video, a class, you know, a classic song. I would I would I would say an era defining song. Yeah, man. But that that was an amazing time. That's the beginning. That's the beginning of everything for like for both of us. That's that's the be- that was the new beginning, bro. It was amazing, bro. That's crazy. Tell us a little bit more about like the origin of your relationship with Post. Oh yeah, um randomly, uh, so it was like my second or third time in LA. Like coming from Atlanta and um I was just I pulled up to this to this crib or whatever. My homie told me to pull up. And um, there was this white kid there. He was like, yo, that white kid raps. <laughs> I'm like, word? He was like, yeah, he, he raps. And so we did, We just started making music. He was, he was pretty cool. Like, he, was not, he wasn't even singing, like, just, like, full, like, swag rap. Mm. <laughs> and um, I was like, all right, this, this is kind of cool. But fast forward a little, um, he told me to uh, move in. He, he was like, yo, you should move in to the, to the place. I'll move in the closet. We could turn my room into a studio. He literally went and slept in the closet while we turned this shit into a studio. We used to be having parties, having a good time and everything. And one day this uh one day we had some girls over. And this black chick had braided his had braided his hair. I think he felt like he felt like Iverson. And that kind of like summed everything up. Like, yo, move to, you should move to LA for a while, make some music. I'll sleep in the closet, turn my room into that. Some chicks came over. I fast forward to this this was a fast forward story, sure, sure. but yeah. Yeah, and that was literally the beginning. But we made so much amazing music. We made like his whole first album. Like he wasn't even signed. We were just creating. So right. like this whole Stony album, most of that just happened. We made hanging out. Yeah, mm-hmm. amazing. That's that's, that's but really everything. Stuff, everything yeah. was perfect timing with that though. True, and now the uh, the world's a different place. Hmm. Uh, speaking of changing the world with music, uh, the next image we have here is the cover. Of Good Gas Volume Three, we talked yeah. a little bit about the bear. The bear's got kind of a tight, tight fit right now. I kind of, I'm kind mm-hmm. of feeling that look. Smokey the Bear is his uncle. Okay. Thanks. Mm-hmm. But he, but Trokey from Atlanta, and he smokes though. You know, Smokey don't fuck with the smoke. That's true. Is it that he doesn't fuck with the smoke, or he just doesn't smoke fuck with the smoke while in the forest? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he's just trying to prevent forest fires. He didn't say don't smoke. So he you think he smoke? He might, he probably smoke at home. He smokes in the city. I mean, <laughs> how the heck did he get, end up with the name Smokey the Bear? You know what I mean? If he's not anti Smokey the Bear. He's Smokey the Bear. I True. think what so... might have happened. I don't want to be dark here. All right. Because I think what might have happened. Because Smokey the Bear used to smoke every fucking where. It wasn't supposed to rhyme. Just happened like that. FKI first. All you right. Feel me? Bars. He used to smoke everywhere. Him and the homies in Yosemite smoking it down. Something caught on fire. He lost somebody that day. And from Damn. that day forward, wow. he vowed to prevent forest fires. Damn. Smokey the Bear. You just scripted the first Smokey the Bear uh, animated film <laughs> uh, that's going to be coming soon. Right. He lost somebody in a fire, bro. Yeah, right. that's, that was a, that's a t- tough story to hear. It is. But now he's passing all along the message of responsibility mm-hmm. when one incinerates anything oh. in a dry forest. Uh, you know, be careful out there, guys. Uh, keeping your eyes open uh, is key. The last image we have from Posted Up tonight uh, is a feast for the eyes. Uh, what what do we got going on in this picture? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I'm in I'm in a place called Third Eye Collective in Atlanta. You know, everybody there they use their third eye. That's some deep shit. They watch it look crazy. But yeah, um, Third Eye Collective. Shout out to all those guys in Atlanta. It's a it's like a, a home of creative motherfuckers, bro. Mm-hmm. Hotbed. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's, it's in the hood, too. That's the crazy thing, bro. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's some white boys I know in Atlanta, bro. That shit is in the hood. But they got the, they, they've been there for years, though. They running. Shout out to them. Third Eye Collective, shout out to you. <laughs> Keeping these walls well decorated. Yeah. Um, Thanks so much. That was po- posted up. Uh, Mary Jane, Westfest TV guys, thank you so much for checking in. This is about that time. We're chilling with your man, uh, FKI first, Kalia McNeil, doing our thing, making the most of a Thursday. A shout out again to Loon 
our sponsors. Uh, first, we checked in with the internet. You told us what was going on. We also like to make sure we check in with the world. We do a segment we call Roll the News. We pick some headlines uh, and we talk about them. Uh, the first uh, Breaking headline news. tonight, we've been talking quite a bit about this. It's actually about uh, federal regulation around uh, psychedelics uh, as medical treatment. Uh, and there was a headline uh, from yesterday uh, saying that federal health agencies are now acknowledging the therapeutic potential of psychedelics. Now, uh, the fine city of Oakland actually just decriminalized uh, the possession of mm -hmm. psychedelics uh, plant-based. Um, and there's other cities that are following suit. Uh, politicians are putting up bills to try to uh, reform this. And now um, Senator Brian Schatz from Hawaii uh, sent a letter um, and offered that psychedelics present an opportunity to provide treatment to patients while expanding psychotherapy treatment options. Seems pretty legit, guys. What do you think? The federal government is now beginning to acknowledge the potential uh, impact and value of these type of plant-based medicines. So everybody's going to be getting geeked up, basically. Seems like, I was actually talking about this with my brother the other night. I, I mean, yeah. is there going to be like a psychedelics dispensary in Oakland? Like you can walk in and you're like, I want... Get your shrooms. Yeah, get your shrooms, get a little San Pedro, like a San Pedro Sol. Wait, what is like San that. Pedro? Uh, it's a cactus uh, that you actually turn into a powder. Oh, That's a psychedelic. What you do with that? Eat it. And what, go, and what happens? It's kind of like a... It's like a clear... There's like a kind of a clear... Uh, Psychedelic experience, you know. San Pedro. The uh, San, that's San Pedro. Yeah, you, I don't. What is it? I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's on the way. I mean, if it's been, <laughs> if it's been decriminalized, you better believe somebody is figuring out right now how to open up or how to add that to their current dispensary. What? Shit, I know one thing. If they doing this, free all my partners for weed. <laughs> <laughs> free all my partners for weed since y'all decriminalizing shit. One hundred percent. All that probation for weed is out of control. But back to the psychedelics. I, I it'll be cool if if it was just all micro doses. Like, cause micro doses, like a micro dose of acid, or like a small a small amount of shrooms. You know what I mean? It could yeah. it could do a lot. But it should there should be like instructions. You know, cause I feel like people. When I all the times I fuck with psychedelics, I'm always in the studio, like working. So I know like all that energy is gonna go towards that. It's like experimenting. Oh shit, I'm gonna create something new. So that's how I always do it. Right. The one time I did a psychedelics, not in the studio, I went to Magic City, bro. Hmm. It was fucked up. I turned into like Malcolm X in a. Uh, I turned into like Malcolm X in uh, <laughs> in the strip club. I'm like giving bitches speeches, like this right. is wrong. You don't have to do this. This is wrong, y'all. And they like gave us money to throw out because like I was judging an open mic. Right. We do open mics in yeah. the strip club in Atlanta. Don't ask people to perform, and we would judge them see if they were good or not. But I'm judging on shrooms, bro. So it's fucking crazy. I'm like booing people, telling people like, "What are you talking about? That's wrong." And they gave us money to throw, and I was giving it to people like, "Get this dirty money away from me!" And it's like so. Back to that. Yeah, it was it was it was weird. <laughs> it was it was funny though. It was pretty funny. But back to what I'm saying, there should be instructions for it, bro, because people don't really know how to, don't really know what they're doing. You know what I mean? And I've never had a bad trip before. Do you know anybody that had a bad trip? I think. I mean, I think if you're in a bad space and yeah. you trip, you're gonna have a bad trip. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's you know they say set and setting. They a say you know like. What happens? Like what it wasn't. It wasn't. It was more so what kind of Noah was describing. Like I've done mushrooms twice, and the first time I did it at the, like as soon as I ingested, I got into an argument with the person I was dating at the time. Oof. And it was awful. I was wait, I was but was upset. it? But was it for a good reason though? Did the what? did the shrooms like open your mind? Like oh shit. No, was I was kind of stuck in that in that headspace for about ten hours. That's a long time. Yeah. So I had to do it again. You weren't playing in any music? Positive space. No. You got to, see? Okay. Back to the instructions. <laughs> these things, you got to you gotta play good music while, while these things are going on. It's okay. going, you know, all the shit, all the, the static, it'll smooth that shit out. Like peanut butter. Yeah, like peanut butter. You got to, see? You got to be playing music or ocean. Mu music, ocean, or trees and all that, that shit. You got to. 
Yeah. <laughs> you can't just be. Yeah, if you just take that. It's okay. Thank you. I appreciate that, guys. Thanks for that. Can I share a little <laughs> mushroom story with you guys? Yes. It was New Year's Eve a couple years ago. I took some mushrooms with a friend. Yes. Uh, I had recently purchased for my parents. Uh, my dad's 80 and my mom's 74. Uh, I bought, bought them a DVD or a Blu-ray disc. Uh, and they called me on New Year's Eve because they couldn't figure out how to use the Blu-ray player. Mm -hmm. So on Mushrooms on New Year's Eve, I had to walk my parents over the phone through how to like actually <laughs> figure out how to get the entire system to work. Yeah. Which, needless to say, was pretty complicated in that yeah, really mental state. <laughs> what, happened, oh. what happened the first time you took acid? Um, it was a really uh, transformational experience. You definitely uh, sort of kind of have a connection to I believe like the earth and your surroundings in a way that forevermore that you have is different than before you took it really um, yeah you I think you definitely have more of an awareness of the physical world mm -hmm. um, but yeah you, it again you just like it kind of just like opens up a whole space uh, in your mind kind of changes your way of thinking and to me is like it can be very clear clarifying um, but again I think you could definitely take way too much and be in a, in a strange space so Again, you go do these things with people that know what they're doing um, and do things with from people that you know who it is. And that's why laws like this, if they change, people can actually have access to like clean, quality product. And right. a lot of bad trips are from bad product, you know? Right. So things like this make some kind of, um, you know, stop fail for that kind of problem. Mm -hmm. um, we have another story, though, guys. And this is a kind of similar story. Uh, Congress, the United States Congress, is clashing over cannabis reform in the House uh, and Senate right now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a debate because what they're trying to do is they're trying to give states rights. Um, so uh, guaranteeing the federal government won't come in um, and step on states who have decided to engage in illegal or medical markets. Um, and again, there's a clash over here. We have a Republican uh, from Alabama, uh, Representative Robert Adderholt. Um, he says, quote unquote, this propo proposal would prevent federal law enforcement from enforcing current law, from protecting public health and ensuring community safety. Um, he continued to say claims of benefits from smoked or ingested marijuana are anecdotal and generally outright fabrication. It is established by fact that such marijuana use has real health and real social harms. Uh, I don't know. I think the war on drug has been a pretty big social harm. So yeah. I think we got to get it get it straight, guys. And things are changing. At least these conversations are being had. Um, ultimately, we need more more reform up there. But you know, the fact that Congress is talking about it, I think, is a really good thing. Um, we have one more story. It's a similar story, but it has a sadder ending. Uh, New York's adult use cannabis bill uh, is dead. Uh, you know, New York was rushing to try to make legalization happen. Uh, New Jersey. Uh, likely will have uh, legal cannabis, I believe, sooner than New York, uh, because now New York's cannabis legalization bill is dead. Wow. There was a conflict. The governor wanted the money for himself, and the bill writers wanted the money to go back into communities that were harmed by the war on drugs. Um, so I think that's a pretty obvious one. Uh, the <laughs> fact that the governor doesn't think that that should be the priority of well, any that money sound made like a, That sounds like a plan. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sorry, Mr. Governor, you need to check yourself. Yeah, man. Um, that money should go right back into those communities. Absolutely. Um, and I think that it makes it all, all a lot more sensible uh, and beneficial for everyone. Free the gas, bro. Free the gas, guys. It's a movement. Free the gas, bro. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was uh, Roll the News, guys. Mary Jane, thank you so much for checking in. West Fest TV. Uh, we're all chilling with you. It's Thursday. It's about that time. We're with you, man. Uh, FKI first. Now, we checked in with first. We checked in with the world. We have to make sure we check in with the stars. Oh. We do something we call astrology time. We break out the salt crystal lamp. Uh, we change the lighting. Uh, we increase the vibe. Uh, we summon the energy, uh, full moons and eclipses uh, that are oh. right around us. And we go into astrology time. Now, first, do you read your horoscope ever? Man, I do every now and then, but I'm, I'm in tune with it. I'm like, I'm aligned, bro. <laughs> I'm aligned in this motherfucker. Like, I get signs and shit. 
if I could a- ask the question in my head, the sign I would get the answer, bro. So interesting. I'm all in there. I'm all in there, bro. Yeah, but I feel that. But well, get, tell me something I don't know, though. Okay. Well, actually, I'm gonna ask you whether the horoscope is on point or not. What we did is we took your horoscope, and you know how those sentences can say you're gonna fall in love, you're gonna get rich, X, Y, or Z. We pulled some sentences from your horoscope. You just tell us if you think they're on point or not. There you go. Okay, so the first one we pulled uh, in tonight's installment of Astrology Time, uh, loyalty is a religion to them. Would you say that loyalty is number one? Loyalty is practically a religion to them. Yeah, I would, I would say, I would say so. Because the people I fuck with, I fuck with hard. And I don't, I don't like... I don't like lose. I don't like losing people. You know what I mean. I don't like it, that. Shit, that shit. I try to like hold on to shit as long as possible. Yeah. Which is a gift and a curse. You know. That is. But yeah. It's that, not always easy. Sometimes you really have to. Yeah. Cross a divide to get there. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. That's real. Okay. Facts. Cool. Sounds like the horoscope was pretty pretty on point there. Uh, next one from astrology time. Uh, they experience their greatest joy through parenthood. What do you think about parenthood? I have a son. Yeah? His name's Cooper. Shout out Cooper. I love him. All right. I'd do anything for him. All right, that sounds yeah. like a pretty good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty right. It's, it's on. Is, is Cooper into the tunes? Yo, yeah, he, well, yeah, he just started making beats. Amazing. I, I'm, like, I put a keyboard in his room and everything. He called me one morning. It was crazy. He was going, like, I usually get home from the studio around, like, 7 in the morning. He goes to school to, like, 7.45. So I'm, like, half sleeping. And I, I hear him, I hear like a sound, I'm like, what the fuck is that? So I go in there, he was making beats and shit. I almost started crying, bro. <laughs> I didn't even interrupt him, I just looked around, I was like, damn, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, bro. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, man. Oh, sick. That's an amazing facts, one. Facts. Cooper, send us your beats, man. We yeah, want to put you on. Boom. It's a lot of potential there. Uh, here's an interesting one uh, that we found in your horoscope. Tell us if you think it's on point or not. Uh, understands the value of daily meditation. Do you do you take a moment during the course of the day and well, kind of just meditate? I meditate every day, bro. Every single day you 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 got to you got to That that's so true. I, every single day. I even listen to what's that lady name? This is um somebody put me on um Joel Hayes or something like that. Y'all okay. know who I'm talking about? I don't. Bro, listen to what her else on? listen to her morning and night. Okay. She get boy. She gets you right at night. She has this thing. She'll be like, while you meditate, she'll be like, picture your parents as a baby. Picture them as a baby, and they're scared. They don't know where to go, and you have to something something. It just gets you a like. I'm like, what? My, my parents as a baby? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you saying, lady? So yeah, and um and sound, bro. I'm 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 deep with sound. Like listening to hurts, like different. Vibrations and shit. I just have them shits playing in the studio, bro. I'm, I'm. I told you, I'm aligned with this shit, bro. This shit is. The third weird. eyes open. <laughs> I'm a, the meditation is happening. I got four eyes, bro. Four eyes. Everywhere, bro. Every I, eyes everywhere. Yeah. Eyes everywhere. All right, that's very dope. Uh, there's one more. This is a little bit more mundane uh, than a meditation experience. Uh, this one says they are an expert at finances. Do you like do you like the dollars and cents? Do you like to get into those numbers yeah. or? Uh, I don't know if that's true. Uh. I was just at a store before I came here. I was just about to buy some damn a thousand dollar jeans like a dumbass. So uh, that one ain't really. I can make some. <laughs> <laughs> I can. Well, yeah. I guess you could say expert. I can make some money, you know what I mean? <laughs> I can I can I can hustle, you know, when it's time. I can get to it when however much we need, I'm gonna get it. Mm-hmm. I know how to spend it too now though. There we go. I yeah. know how to spend it now too. So you're but, an expert uh, on both sides of the field. Are you saying I'm lying? Well Oh no, that's Clarence. <laughs> we, that's Clarence. Uh, we have a critter click here on about that time. Our animals in the critter click, they show up, they hang out with us. Uh, this is Clarence the lion. What's up, Clarence? Uh, you mentioned you were a lion earlier. Um, you know, sometimes we're a lion out there. We make an instinctual choice. We just, like, a $1,000 jeans sometimes has to happen. Yeah, bro. But they was five, though. Like, you're going to walk in looking like a million bucks on them. Yeah. 
So no. a million, that's a small investment. A thousand dollars. That looks like a really good investment. You get turned into a million just like that. Right. It's, it's, you see, it's kind of like investing, you know? It is like investing. I agree with that. thousand dollars looking like a million. That's a very good point. Yeah. That, is ex- now that is expert finances, if you ask me. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Cool. Well, that was astrology time. It, it seems like the the sun and the stars and the moon, uh, they sent up some messages. It was some cool stuff. Uh, first, now, before we wrap up here at about that time, we like to make sure we give you a chance to let the people in the lands of Mary Jane and Westfest TV and in Snoop's audience know about what they should be checking for uh, this coming year. Good gas, good gas, good gas, good gas. I'm going to deliver the good gas to you continuously. Good gas. I might even have a good gas trucking company. You don't even good know. gas trucking guys. It it could definitely happen. <laughs> well, one thing is for certain: there will not be a shortage of good gas this no. coming year, guys. Uh, check for it. FKI first. And I also have a um, other than good gas, the Tokyo project. All the music I created in Tokyo, like we were talking about, I'm I'm releasing that too. So oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That sounds really cool. Tokyo the project. Tokyo the project. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Tokyo the project. Ooh. FKI first. Uh, Kalia McNeil. Ooh. Mary Jane. Ooh. About that time. I'm your host Noah Rubin. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, it's been real, guys. Hey.